All right, guys, time to back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Vanity News. Plenty to dive into today. Some roster updates happening. Vanity's opinion on why Nitro was falling short for 100 Thieves, but also some further updates to the North American qualifier. Many upsets happening yesterday. So many teams stuck down now in the lower bracket. Very much intrigued to your thoughts down below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the video. We'd really appreciate it. Rocketing our way to 10K right now. First of all, this is some Oxygen Esports. They depart the Turkish scene. Let go of these guys they've been rocking with for quite some time. They are getting involved in a lot of new esports right now, the Oxygen Esports fellas. And well, they've decided to go a different direction from the Turkish sheen and go instead into the North American side, bringing on an academy, as they point out right here. So the Oxygen Academy is formed with these fellas right here. So yes, unfortunate for the Turkish guys that get released, but um, at the same time, this is quite an interesting decision from Oxygen to come in into the North American scene, because we know, looking at this bracket, right, we'll have a look at it in a couple of seconds, for the North American Challengers qualifier, it is incredibly stacked. I guess one of their thoughts right here with an academy might be okay. Let's bring in some of these guys, meld some of them, in, like mold some of them into some great talents, and then we might be able to actually build a competitive team or sell them on to well, another roster that might potentially want these guys. Because certainly that might be the case with teams looking to rebuild at some point or another. Interesting decision I thought from these fellas. This is also from some roses like some people should not be allowed to tweet hashtag VCT. So yes, there's certainly been some questionable things hitting the timeline the last 24 hours, but we shall dive into some of it. This firstly from Vanity, I thought some interesting interesting comment he made on his stream last night because of course Nitro very recently has gone back to Counter-Strike. He's left at the 100 Thieves Valorant roster. Of course he did some decent things on this roster right but especially towards the end of his tenure did not have the success that they would have wanted to have had and um, you know he kind of felt a little bit uncomfortable I think on the Astra at times. There was other roles that he had well played a little bit better but I thought Vanity's perspective here was quite interesting. The time you know Nitro really played Astra in the wrong way like he used it to some degree effectively but it was nowhere near as effective as it could have been and he reckons that Zoms for example on Sentinels is just way more effective than Nitro was and um, yeah, there's a good reason maybe why he's actually left Valorant to go back to Counter-Strike because maybe his tenure here especially on that role was not exactly well long lived. Nitro wouldn't like go like he wouldn't go into Astral mid round and have like sick impact with his util like <laughs> Superman does or like Zoms he would use his he would use his util for himself and leave in the same spots which I mean it works a little bit but it's not like it's not as impactful as the other Astro players I would take Zoms over Nitro any day of the week. I get Tig. Oh! What? What stream are you watching? I would... Any day of the week, I would take Zoms over Nitro. Take Without a doubt in my mind. P just looks bad. Zoms doesn't lose you around. So let's dive straight into the North American Challengers qualifier. This has been crazy the last day or so. And well, for example, this is Jonas points out. Neon in pro play was getting used on the Accru side. Which, um, you know, we haven't really seen too much of, right? But 27 and 13 against that, well, the KCP, the Pioneers, of course. So, I mean, phenomenal series. We'll have a look at exactly how this went to in a second. Because, um, yeah, so many games and matches to kind of dive into. We'll definitely focus on some of the key ones. For example, the guards versus FaZe. We talked about this actually a couple of days ago now, that this was a possible game and that FaZe, of course, a very new roster. This is the thing when you announce your roster so late and confirm it so late, that yes, the FaZe guys might have got a few weeks here to practice, or at least a little bit of time to practice, but um, I mean, it's probably nowhere near the time that the guard have got to practice, especially with net shooting like this. Like, um, this guy was out of control yesterday in this series. Like, this game one literally just started the game with an ace here, and um, I mean, on Haven, and that's already a great side for the future of this series when um, he just starts out the first round with, with the quick 5k so just ridiculous stuff really from net i mean the whole series he was dominant and um, i mean yeah young player like seven of course was doing some good things as well on t1 we'll have a look at how those series went here in a second but again net if anything was probably the stand-up player of the day the headshots with the classic were incredibly crisp and um this is another clip he actually tweeted out here from later on when it went to game three up against phase here on splits and i mean yeah look at this with a phantom the spray transfer and then takes down the last guy as well four headshots like um i mean that was absolutely fantastic flawless round for the guard as well here just some crucial kills on the way to them actually winning this entire series. So this is the bracket we're going to dive into. Of course, it was a crew that ended up taking down the Pioneers. So these guys will go on to play version 1. Very exciting. Version 1 took down Complexity. Saw it down to the lower bracket already. So Rise took down Sonics. That was a 2-1. to one. That was a close one. Like a built by gamers now down in the lower bracket as well. Gen G and well T1, they made it through. Evil Geniuses dropped through. And now it's going to be Rise versus T1 and version 1 versus a crew in the upper quarterfinals. The lower side, if anything, was even more stacked 
reacting crazy to see how this one went. I guess I can make it just about slightly bigger. But um, I mean, yeah, up here we got Exet versus Illusion. They won that one and then they beat out Radiance. Renegades went down to low bracket as well. NRG made it through. And then we've got um, you know, Ambox making it through. Also, Luminosity lost to the Guards because the Guard beat FaZe in that series we just saw 2-1. Have a look at that in more detail here in just a second. So Luminosity lose to the Guards. Then they're up against the Knights now because TSM got beaten 2-1 by the Knights. So you can just see how crazy this bracket is, right? You've got to get all the way to here. This is a qualification spot. And then if you don't make it to there, you have to go through the lower bracket and make it through anyway. So only four teams out of all these rosters will actually qualify, which um, is pretty absurd. If they lose this time, there is another shot to do it again without, of course, the four best teams from this one. But um, I mean, still, it's going to be far from easy. Let's look at some of these games real quick because TSM versus Knights, this is a pretty phenomenal one. Went all the way down to the wire on the game three. I mean, you can see Scuba was um, really the dominant force. This guy, I'm pretty sure we'll have a look at here in a second. The Dasuna from 100 Thieves really rates this guy from back in the Counter-Strike days. And now it's and now in Valorant, right? He was absolutely dominant here. Like, Sabrosa had a difficult time. But yeah, Wardell was, was pretty good on the TSM front. 13 to 5 on this game. Well, looked at this point like they were going to run away with it, but not the case. 13 to 8 on Ascent. Goes the way of the Knights with Frosty going 25 in 12 on the game two. And then game three, I guess, was just the scuba show, right? 36 in 17 on this crazy map three on Bayern. It goes 16 to 14 through overtime. And um, I mean, yeah, they just can't get it done at the end of the day. So phenomenal stuff, really. Phenomenal series. TSM down to the lower bracket with their new roster. Like, um, but to be fair, there's a lot of other great rosters already down there. It's going to be far from easy for even some of these top teams to actually qualify for challenges. This also another game going on, FaZe versus the Guards. This is uh, one of the ones I was most excited for, frankly. And um, I mean, yeah, like you can see Net here with a fantastic series. Valand as well, definitely deserving of a mention. And Sire Player as well, kind of formerly known as Spider. Like um, he's on this roster as well nowadays. A really great roster, I think, the Guard have put together. FaZe really struggled here. Larry Banks had a tough time. Haven game one went the Guards way 13 to 8. Game 2 was 13 to 5 on a sent to a nice bounce back, especially from Dicey and Shot Up right here. Pretty dominant performance, all things considered. But split was 13 to 8. So yeah, pretty phenomenal, frankly. That um, I mean, yeah, we saw that moment, that kind of highlight moment from Net there as well. But Valen was also definitely turning up the final map. So some phenomenal matches on the day. And that leaves us with this as the lower bracket. So this is um honestly so stacked, it's insane. But you've got to make it all the way through here to actually have a chance to qualify out of those brackets. But yes, TSM versus Saw is first up. Luminosity is still alive here up against Zero Marksman. They lost to the Guard, of course, earlier up as well. And Boxer here. So pretty sure the way this works is the bracket might flip. So they're now kind of on the different sides of the bracket to what they might have been playing against. FaZe took down Virtuosas. So they're still alive. They're going to play the Pioneers. That's going to be far from easy. I mean, um, yes, yeah, so a FaZe Pioneers you've got right here. Jinji, Renegades, Luminosity, TSM. They're still just about alive. BBG are already out. Evil Geniuses, they're already out of it. So, I mean, yeah, Ghost Gaming are already out of it as well to Cosmic Divide. So already so many rosters and top organizations finding themselves out of this one. And as Scuba says from the night side, 2-1 TSM, who is doubting now, right? So he's pretty happy about his performance. And as a sooner goes, Demon in CS and a Demon in Val. Now this also very interesting comment I thought from Leaf over the Cloud9 sides, having a good time watching this, right? Having already been qualified into the North American Changes. Crazy how the teams who troll the practice get upset, he says. So of course, we've seen quite a few teams, but right? we just went through some of the teams that have lost right, fallen down to losers. And he reckons maybe playing some of these guys in practice over the last several weeks, that some of these guys are actually not taking practice as seriously as they might be. And it's the teams that are, even with the less paper talent on paper, I guess, that are running away with these series. So not incredibly clear to kind of dive into pinpoint exact teams that might be, but of course we looked at a fair few favorites that have lost today. So maybe you guys might want to figure that out in the comment section below. This also from Daffer I thought was kind of funny from the Sentinel sides. What about if you don't practice, right? Because of course Sentinels, that's what people say about them. And of course they've got a nice free pass into challenges anyway. So I guess they don't have to worry too much right now, but uh, probably a good idea to get some practice in the current meta. It is a strange row with Neon in there. And of course the changes to the weapon balancing that's happened recently. And as I just pointed out, these are some of the big games for the day with version one, a crew rise versus T1 in the upper side, exit NRG, the guard versus Knights. Two of these teams will qualify today, I believe. Very much intriguing your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, tells the YouTube gods this is a good video. Others like you should see it as well. And I've grow the competitive Valorant community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. I'm swim towards the spawn side. But again, he's got his work cut out for him, to be completely honest. Right, the turret is just waiting for a ping so he can end up pulling out the nano oh, 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 And it works oh. out! The meat grinder for Net! It was his trap and it ends up going down! No oh, way! Net. No oh, way! Net! A 1v4 to kick off the game for Guard! And my god, Net, did it have to be an ace? You're kidding me! I had- I rode him completely- These rotations back towards the B side and- Call here, noise towards elevator. I'm not sure if the guard have met that or made that read. And Sayed, that's a shot you have to hit. 
in Baby Bay, just given a chance oh to creep God. on through. Now it's up to Nat. He's holding down to the lower bomb site. He's got one. He's got oh, three Nets! for four. That is uh, what <laughs> Nets. That is so so quick. It's just a firing range, dude. He sees four pick. Now in comes the execution then, I guess it's just gonna be all five players here with their pistols to try to take this one up. Diffuse is going in, Larry is going down, the Diffuse is still going in, nobody's gonna be able to stop it! The Cosmic Divide does it all, and we've seen yet another...